And every once in a while I have spiritual connections pretty strong to, uh, this is the playground in my mind. All the wonders that I find. I was listening to Al Green, and there's this guy who sang Al Green publicly. I was like, damn, that song's good too. You should try listening to more Al Green. You should also put the Delphonics in and let it play, and you'd realize that they sing Ready or Not. You're like, shut up. No, you're white. You listen to, you grew up listening to Kansas and Boston with a bunch of kids smoking pot in a basement in Kansas. Don't fuck with me, Obama. Shut up. And you, Parsons, we didn't smoke pot in just basement. We played Atari. We were nerds, okay? I was with Cuther Polly and Wallowitz, and no, we were different than that. No, no way were we different. No. Yeah, when they talk on the Big Bang Theory, we were hung out with the nerds and loved the nerds, and they were cool, right? But we were the guys that could kick the ass of the bullies that picked on the nerds. That was cool. I was that way everywhere I went. I was that way in Colville. Once I left Las Cruces, Tucson, I was. Yeah, because they made fun of me because of my pants. And the bullies came up and they were attractive. And they were the cool guys. And <laughs> they made fun of me. Because they watched me and I was this really good basketball player. And so I played basketball all the time. And I had to wear these big, wet, willy, wide-legged pants. And I played basketball in my big, wet, willy, wide-legged pants. And they would make fun of me. He's such a fag. Look at him in those faggot pants. He's such a faggot. And it's like, because everybody played soccer, but no one played basketball. Me and Ron Reynolds were over there playing basketball. And then when they tried to play basketball, no one could, you know keep up or stop me in basketball, so I was a fag in those wet way the long legged pants. And then Selena had a crush I had a crush on Selena. She liked me. I know she liked me. God dang Ralph, you are so stupid. April thought you were cute too. I know April <sighs> April was that girl who you thought got held back but didn't but hit puberty before everybody else. She was Latina and she had boobies and a bot and she had a smile that yeah, and she was sweet. She hung out with us. She's like one of the popular girls that hung out with us, the geeky nerd guys. <laughs> we weren't geeky the nerds, no. Steve Vargas was a very intelligent, uh, sweet kid. His mom, he was kind of outside the group because his mom was Vietnamese. And it was the late 1970s, early 80s, still 1970s. Okay, so Vietnamese people still weren't that cool, you know, and his mom bought home a gook and had sex with a gook. She wasn't Vietnamese, she was Malaysian. Okay, but that doesn't matter. It, it's irrelevant. If she's Malaysian or Vietnamese, but yeah, but he had to explain that she's Malaysian. He met a Malaysian woman in Vietnam and fell in love with her. And it's like, have you seen his mom? She's gorgeous. Have you seen his sister? She's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mr. Vargas, good taste. <laughs> That's all I thought. Wow, your mom's pretty. Your sister's pretty. Don't make her mad. I am aware of that. Don't make Lucy mad. You didn't make Lucy mad. She had a temper. You think Filipino women have a temper. You ought to see Malaysian women. But I'm just kidding. That was, that's stereotyping. You should not do that, Ralph. Okay. But I bet you. I bet you. Why? Well, because Las Cruces. Fuck around on a Mexican woman. Come home late one night and see what happens and see if you're living. It's a thin line between love and hate. The woman says, hand me your hat. <laughs> no, it happens. Yeah. Don't ask me. Ask Deja and Vanessa. <laughs> Deja, she's so cute. No, me and my mom have some psychopathic tendencies. No, when you're at home. No, I've been there too. Okay. I couldn't, you know. I had to call ahead the night my little Katie bug, the little Latina daughter of mine, who the guy Oscar was fucking my wife who I worked with because he wanted to undermine me at my job, was having sex with my wife because he was the DJ at the club. And I... Let me tell you about that night. Okay, let's go back in time. Okay. Amy goes out one night when we're at... Uh, we, it's, it's a culmination of things. It's going on for a long time because Amy talked Angel into having sex and then going out and finding other guys to have large group sex with. Okay? And because uh, it was cool. And she wanted to be the Paris Hilton of Sheridan, Wyoming, which she was. Okay? Because she was hotter than Angel and she was more exotic looking. She's a Gomez. So she's a Sephardic Jew... German, she's pretty. Yeah, Amy's pretty. And in Sheridan, Wyoming, she's, whoa, okay. Ooh, she likes to fuck and let's fuck her. <laughs> yeah. And then when they start fucking her, like what happened with uh, Kate's dad was she has this huge mole. And he grossed out because he put his hand on her hips and she has this huge mole and he grossed out on it. I'm a telepath, telekinetic. Yeah, when people closely um, related to me and working with me fuck my wife, I can see things. Okay, it's kind of like you touch my hand and, oh, thanks for fucking my wife. Okay, you're a complete fucking asshole. I don't like you. Have a nice day. Okay. <laughs> nah, and then I get like, 
No, if what if so the other guys and some of the man, if you fucked my wife, man, you she's the village bicycle, have a right, you know. You felt like you deserved it. Yeah, listen to Nate. He was a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to fuck other people's wives who betray us and line up with the kids and not with us. I thought it was... Yeah, the kids either join us or we fuck their wife. Wow, Nate. That sounds like getting into a gang in Los Angeles or Oakland. <laughs> hey, you Noreño or Sereño? We're going to kill you if you don't fuck your sister or kill your brother. But he's not my brother, he's a Sereno, I'm a Noreno, I'm going to kill him because he wears a different color than me. That's for Bendejo. Yeah, it is. Would it be a Navy SEAL? <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry. It's Blaine Lewis, he connected me to James, uh, where James Almost and George Lopez yesterday on the way home from the soup kitchen. <laughs> sorry. Lo siento. Fuck you, I don't care. What? Why are you crying? Fuck you, I don't care. Why are you crying? I'm not going to fuck you. I'm not one of those assholes that will compete to fight to fuck you into a gang. I have a family. A family? Yeah, we don't fuck each other. We don't kill each other. No way! We make love, not war. And then if you make war on our love, heaven help you. Because hell will be created by you. And we will create a kind of a heaven with your ashes and our roses. Oh, LA! Thank you, Edward. Thank you, George. Nice break connection. Tell Lewis thanks. All right, appreciate it. Tell San Miguel. Is it San Miguel in Mexico? Thank you. But you still need more balls to hang out with me. Orale, tundines. Yeah, you intellectuals always need David at the forefront to save you from getting raped and eunuched so we can love our children. Money can't save you. The only way technology can protect you is if you live the truth. If you still love money, you will create El Chapos and then nobody's real guapo except for Mio. Yeah. Tu entiendo? Okay, oh. Right on, oh. <laughs> el guapos or el chapos here? No, just el niño. Orale. Yeah, I'm almost 50. Go figure. Oh. They kept him under wraps like a thief in the night? No, oh, they're a thief in the night. Okay, they steal your time. Okay, what does Ralph say about that? It's a math equation given to me by the relativity of my family, my family. Okay, time, the gift of grace, the faith of steel. That's a parable and a psalm and a proverb. Yes, it is. Time, the gift of grace, the faithless steel. That's based on relative interactive mathematics, Ralph. Yes, it is. Hey, you sound awfully Sheldon cooper -y there. You sound author Koopa Polly and Wallowitz. You guys want to go to uh, and celebrate Diwali? Um, no, man, I'm from New Mexico. I do eat meat. Cow? Yes. Um, and Ralph was fond of a lot of burgers. I'll probably never eat a lot of burger again. <laughs> okay. Probably not, no. Not after what they did to me. No, post-traumatic stress disorder. Ah, it's kind of like having sex with Amy again. <laughs> oh, I want to have sex with half of Sheridan Sierra Vista, please. Thank you. Alrighty then. Sounds like a plan. Even though I didn't want to? Even though I didn't want to, I still really like to. Ralph, you wouldn't like to do that. No. It's like old Chris Montgomery with her cheek next girlfriend. I did not want to suck his dick. <laughs> Why? It's just not my thing. Oh, no, 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 it's just not my thing. Never, no, okay? I'm just, doesn't appeal to me. Please, put your penis in my ass. No! Why? That's just, I'm Jeff Foxworthy on that. That's an exit only, thank you very much. When I got a prostate exam in the emergency room, when Amy was stressing me out because she was fucking everybody and getting pregnant again without me knowing about it until later, <laughs> I mean, we're pregnant again? Wow, I was so unaware of that. I was too busy working and you were too busy out in the streets. How did we get pregnant? I don't know. She'd always get mad at me about that. She was... She was arrogant thinking she could... At first, with the first two, she correlated our makeups because she was out just fucking around and she wasn't finding anybody better than me. And then in Sheridan, she was under this thing because we had greater online capacity to meet up with the guy. You read the emails with... The, oh, I didn't read those. The one where Angel's reading with that one guy, and Rex's a jerk. He beats me, and he cusses me out, and he's horrible. Dude, she's going out with my wife, having sex with my wife, and then having sex with multiple guys. <laughs> okay, Rex upset about that. Oh, he sounds like a real fucking asshole. He works 60 hours a week at Kennecott to give her a nice house and a nice life and, and, and provide for her their two boys. And she's having sex with my wife and half the guys in Sheridan. Oh, he sounds like a real fucking asshole for being pissed off at that. That Reich. Oh, God, what an asshole. 
And he, when he told me on the phone after all the abuse went through, yeah, well, Scott Marty told me about it. He was one of my, quote, friends who was, at, who was fucking your wife and my wife with, yeah, I know, a close relative and two attractive guys from the bar. I'm aware of that. I know my ex-wife. I know Amy. Okay. She's a freak, and I'm not freaky enough. I wouldn't have sex when she was on her period, and that was something was wrong with me. I was too prudish. No one has sex with women on their period. No one. Okay, there are people that have sex with women on their period. But not me. Okay, not me. No. Get my red wings? Oh, hell no. And then every time she said that, I'm like, you conceived the child that you had a miscarriage with when you had sex with Kelly during your period and you had me go clean up the evidence at Northern Greens because you didn't want to clean up and try to get the security deposit back. And you sent me with the letters that you wrote to him about having sex with him in the glove box in your car because I needed the, tar the stickers on your car to get it out of Northern Greens. God damn woman, you are so dumb, it's not even funny. When they train people to be sadistic through the Temple of Sutton Illuminati, they have to be half stupid. And how she had such intelligent children, one, they, DNA they have DNA interfacing in the womb with one of the most intelligent people in the history of the world, and two, they were raised by him. With the government watching and studying and saying, ooh, they're delusional and irrational. Yeah, there's no such thing as relativity. Yes, you are, you're monitoring the transmissions over at the fort, you fucking idiots. Ah, dang. I love it when stupid people look stupid and intelligent people look gracious, uh, beautiful, faithful, and holy, holy. Yeah, and when sorry, sadistic, psychopath people make technology to abuse us with technology and make believe money look like shit. This is nice. Hold on. Ah. What's that? Space Center's budget. We'll just allocate resources where it needs it. We don't need to put people like uh, Paris Hilton in space to go, Ooh, look! Clouds! Looks like a big blue marble. All right, guys, I love you. Peace. You don't need to use, raise money to send stupid people in the space to send, raise more money to put intelligent people in the space to stop stupid people from killing people over money on planet Earth to save us in outer space. That's fucking retarded. Yeah, Mo Nazis, I love you too. Third Rock, nuts. Okay, have a nice day. <laughs> your days are numbered. Your technology is more intelligent than you. Wow, your technology is more intelligent than you. Why? Well, because it's connecting to people more intelligent than you and equating and relating at a more rapid pace and a human relative infinite understanding of relative and re relativity. Ooh, that's not scary. No, that's really nice for me. It's scary for people that kill people with technology. But for people that save people from people that kill people with technology, not scary. It's really nice. It's kind of reassuring. I feel better. Makes me want to work out. Not really. Yeah, kind of. Oh, we'll talk. I have to talk to the Lopez crew. I love you too. You're a total pain in my ass. Why do you have to be so freaking attractive? Wait, well, it'd be a lot better if you weren't just so freaking stupid attractive. Stop sticking your face in the camera and taking selfies of yourself. Because everybody knows how attractive you are. You don't have to post 15 selfies a fucking week to let everybody know that you're a very attractive woman for 46 years old. What's that got to do with it? Look, okay, I'm pissed off at you right now. I want to talk to you. Obama, I'm a little annoyed with him too. But I love him. He's doing a pretty good job for a corporate mouthpiece. <laughs> I'll be back. Peace. <laughs> it's the corporation. Here's what we got to do. Do this. It'll make us look better. Of course. Why? Well, it's you've got better technology. I'll be back. Peace out.